There are three main ways I can tell someone is wealthy when I meet them. Either they work in finance, their parents are extremely wealthy, or they are doctors. Sometimes doctors are the richest people. Because there aren't enough specialists in their field, hundreds of specialty doctors are worth $1 million or more. We'll look at the top 10 highest paid experts today and see how much money they bring in. Welcome to Financial Fluence. In this video, we'll talk about the 10 highest paid doctors. Let's now get going. Number 10. Oncology Being a doctor is an emotional job because you're often seeing patients at their most vulnerable and giving them information that is heartbreaking, scary, and downright confusing when you're an oncologist. Oncologists are doctors who specialize in treating cancer. According to Merritt Hawkins, the average salary for oncologists is $393,000 per year. There are three main types of oncologists. Medical oncologists, who use chemotherapy, targeted drugs, or immunotherapy. Radiation oncologists, who utilize radiation. And surgical oncologists, who do biopsies and surgery. It's not easy to become an oncologist and make that fantastic salary. And you'll be using that money to pay off a lot of school loan debt. Oncologists have to go to college for four years, go to medical school for four years, and do two to four years of residency or fellowship training. Number nine, pulmonology. Because breathing is so vital, there are two pulmonologists. Pulmonologists are specialists who focus on diseases of the respiratory system, such as diseases that cause fever, a dry cough, and pneumonia, and they make a decent living doing so. Pulmonologists make around $390,000 per year on average. You could say they can breathe easy with that type of money in their bank account, but being a pulmonologist isn't all smooth sailing and easy breathing. For a total of roughly 12 years, you must complete a four-year bachelor's degree, a four-year medical program, a three-year specialist training program, and a two- to three-year fellowship. Pulmonologists usually work in intensive care and treat serious problems with the lungs and chest after they finish school and work their way up to that high income. Number 8. Otolaryngologist Do you know what an otolaryngologist is? Neither do I, but I'm certain you've heard of an ENT, and they're the same thing. That's correct. Ear, nose, and throat specialists make a lot of money. They should make around $420,000 per year. After completing their bachelor's degree in medicine and five years of specialized training, Graduates must pass the American Board of Otolaryngology exam and then continue their education for another two years. I get the impression that most ENTs didn't have much time to party in college. ENTs aren't just concerned with the ears, nose, and throat. They must also deal with the head and neck and be trained to perform surgery on all of the above, making them very busy doctors. Number 7. Anesthesiologist we no longer have to go through painful procedures, which is one of the best things about modern medicine. We're no longer downing a bottle of whiskey on the battlefield as Hank from down the street delivers us all to you. We've got a lot more safety and comfort now, and one of the main reasons for that is that anesthesiologists exist, and they make an average of $440,000 every year. Anesthesiologists are in charge of making sure that patients don't feel any pain before and after surgery. An anesthesiologist is responsible for a lot more than just putting a mask on a patient's face and counting to 10. Before the surgery, the right combination of drugs for the surgery itself and the days or hours of recovery are chosen. It goes without saying that anesthesiologists work in high-stress settings, watching over patients during surgery to make sure they are unconscious and not suffering excruciating pain. But first, anesthesiologists have to go to school for four years and take hard classes. Then, they have to work for four years in a residency program. This means they spend a total of eight years in school. Number 6. Dermatologists People care a lot about having clear skin, which contributes to dermatologists' $420,000 annual salary. In 2019, 1.2 million Americans spent more than $500 on skincare products alone. Dermatologists are specialists in diseases of the skin, hair, nails, and mucous membranes. Although many people visit them for acne, they are also the primary medical professionals who can treat and diagnose conditions like skin cancer. They are also the doctors who you see popping pimples on Instagram. You'll need to finish at least 12 years of education to be a dermatologist. 
And before we continue, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, hit the like button, and turn on the notification bell to be notified every time a new video is uploaded. And let's continue. Number 5. Non-Invasive Cardiologists Non-invasive cardiologists come in at number 5 on my list with an average pay of $440,000 per year. Non-invasive cardiologists are heart doctors who use non-invasive methods to treat, diagnose, and prevent heart problems. Depending on how bad the patient's illness is, they can offer both outpatient and inpatient care. To do this, they perform CTAs, echocardiograms, and stress tests. Non-invasive cardiologists still need to finish roughly 14 years of study and pass a number of exams in order to get certified, despite the fact that there is a little less blood involved. Number 4. Urologist If you only think of one thing when you hear the phrase, it may be difficult to understand why urologists earn an astounding $464,000 a year on average for inspecting pee in a cup. However, urologist roles are far more diverse than most people believe. Urologists are experts in the urinary tract, but they also know about your kidneys, bladder, and if you have it, your male reproductive system. Students must first complete a four-year undergraduate program, followed by four years of medical school, followed by an additional five years of specialty training. Once they have finished all of their certification requirements, urologists may choose a specialty that interests them. Number three. Gastroenterologist. If you have stomach problems, a sick liver, or tongue difficulties, you'll see the same specialist, a gastroenterologist. They have a lot of body parts and systems they need to learn about, which is why they make $495,000. They must be experts in a variety of organs. Gastroenterologists conduct colonoscopies and DOS checks, but no invasive procedures. Once they pass their specialized certification exam, they have to go to school for 14 years before they can start working. Number 2. Orthopedic Surgeons I'm sure you can understand why there are orthopedic surgeons sitting courtside at the games since they are doctors who specialize in bones, muscles, ligaments, tendons, and joints. Orthopedic surgeons have become some of the highest paid doctors in the world, in part because every team in the NBA and NFL has one on standby. On average, orthopedic surgeons make $536,000 per year. They do orthopedic surgeries like knee replacements, soft tissue repairs, joint surgery, and fixing broken pieces of bone. Unfortunately, orthopedic surgeons cannot afford to be lazy in college. 15 years of schooling is required, and they must pass a rigorous testing system before even beginning their residency. Number 1. Invasive Cardiologists on average, invasive cardiologists earn $648,000 per year, making them the highest paid doctors in the United States. To put this in context, that is more than 1.5 times what the President of the United States makes in office, despite the fact that the President does not do life or death surgery like invasive cardiologists. Their main job is to treat heart problems caused by problems with the heart structure or electrical system. They are capable of inserting stents, performing angioplasty, and inserting catheters. They must complete at least 14 years of higher education to obtain their certification. And even then, given the nature of the profession, 60% of invasive cardiologists will be mentioned in a malpractice lawsuit at some point in their careers, which can be quite stressful. And that's all. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you enjoy similar stuff, Check out my other videos, and if you like it, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and turn on the notification bell. And I'll see you in the next video!